The message is the choice is yours. I hope uh, that you know the through the thoughts that's given to you that you will uh, let this be a, a learning process that I'm going to be making my choices by the direction it, and leadership of the Lord. Uh, too many times, as Brother Charlie even brought these things out a little bit in his lesson, we, we have our own ideas and uh, you can't sway us from them, you know. Uh, it's easy for, uh, it's, it's really easy to just uh, be angry and resentful or it's easy to just say, uh, I'm not going to live my life with that, you know. Uh, fact is, September, I'll be 74. I don't know how much more time God's going to give me, and I don't have time to uh, be angry. Uh, I'm not going to be anyone doormat, but I don't have to be angry, and I don't have to be resentful. I don't have to do that. I can be what God wants me to be, and I plan to be that. Uh, one thing I've made up my mind is by God's grace, I will be by Paula's side unless I go first uh, till she died. You know, I'm, that's my choice, and I'm going to live that choice for her. Uh, and I believe it's honoring the Lord at the same time. Joshua, if you have your Bible and you open to the 24th chapter, Joshua was just truly a man of God. Uh, if you go in my front door, you'll have, you'll see this sign right here on this, it's in this verse, it's been on there for about three years. I, we had some little smaller ones we gave out on Father's Day one time. Well, I saw this one in uh, wooden things and purchased it, and it's been on the door, and that's uh, a constant reminder for me and my grandsons to live and honor and serve uh, the Lord. Uh, in Joshua 24, 15, it says, and, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in, in whose land you dwell. But as far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's a decision. That's something he made a choice, and that's uh, something you choose to do or not to do. You know, since the Lord uh, created man and gave him intelligence, uh, made him a moral, spiritual being, he's uh, had the power and the privilege to choose, uh, to choose to do good or bad. Uh, no other thing that God made, no other animal has that privilege totally uh, with the total ability to, to uh, make choices like you and I do as human beings. And we can at our own expense and outcome choose right or wrong. We can choose good or bad. We can choose Christ or Satan or we can choose heaven or hell. We can choose to hate or love. We can choose all, one or the other of all these things. In your, whole, in your lifetime, there's going to be tests along the way for, for these kind of things, and you're going to have to make the choice what you're going to do. In other words, it's up to you uh, how you die. It's uh, up to you whether you die as a lost sinner or as a saint of God. And so I want to share some of the thoughts with you on choices. Uh, we have the power, number one, we have the power uh, of cho making choices. Now if you, I'm going to give you some time. Open your Bible, read with me. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, uh, I'm glad that God gives us these choices. As uh, You know, I'm, I'm finding this in my last uh, days of my life that there's those that, are, that are in my around my surroundings that has it in their mind 
that they're going to make my choices as to how I live my life or spend my money or do whatever. I have the power to make my choices to do whatever I want to with whatever God has put in my possession as a steward of his. And I do that. And I almost, if I had any resentment, that would be one of the things that no one is going to tell me how to spend what I've earned with my life for my being, except God. Deuteronomy, uh, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings, therefore choose life, that, excuse me, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and thy strength of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Now, of course, he's talking to Israel, to the, to the Jewish people, but this also applies to you and to me that he is our God. He is the one that is our life. He is the one that's our strength. If you woke up this morning it's because he allowed you to wake up, and if you're still breathing a breath of fresh air, it's because he's allowing you to breathe his air. And so we, he gives us that privilege, that power uh, that he's surrendering it to us to enjoy, a power of, of uh, with the ability to understand. All right. Aren't you glad that you can understand uh, things? I, you know, I am too. I'm, I, I know I'm getting old because I have people that tries to explain in detail everything to me like I am a first grader, you know. <laughs> and that's okay. I just kind of grin to myself, so, you know, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, get in the car at this side if you're going to drive or walk around on that side and get in over there, you know, kind of detailed, but that's okay. Uh, and sometimes I've had people to order my, my meal for me, and that's funny, you know, and I say, okay, that's exactly what I like to eat, you know. <laughs> uh, we can go along with whatever we want to and enjoy life, or we just stand up, bow up, and be angry, you know. There's, uh, we can choose. There's certain, there's things that are just certain and true and right. And we make the, have the power to make the choice of those things. Uh, Charlie, uh, you know, bringing out the, the uh, different things that we have to be on guard for. Uh, but there, and there's some things that you have to make the choice yourself, regardless of what people will actually say. You just have to make the choice knowing what you're doing. And, they're, and because they are true and because they're the right thing uh, to do. Uh, good, honest, uh, upright person. That's what God wants in our life. We have the power. I have the power to be that kind of a person. I, I have the power given to me to be honest. I don't like lying. I don't even want a liar around me. I don't like thieves. I don't want them around me. I like honest, good people. I like to be able to lay anything down right there, walk off, be gone a month, and come back, and it's still lying right there because I left it there. I like that kind of a lifestyle and, and, and uh, making the choices to be with those kind of people. Uh, and then there's the personal choice. Look at Matthew 16, 15. I remember my personal choice and you may get tired of hearing this, but I don't get tired of telling it. I remember July 13, 1969, that I made a personal choice that day. And that's, this was a choice. Matthew 16, 15, he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Now people were saying he was a prophet, he was John the Baptist, he was this or that. He said, Who do you say I am? Peter said, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And, you know, John said in John, 1 John 5, 1, whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And so uh, the only one that can make the choice as to who he is for, is you. 
No one else. No family member. It's not by proxy. It, it cannot, they can't make your choices. They may bring you and uh, they may drag you to church. <laughs> they may put you in every class of everything, but they can't make your choice for you. You have to make that choice for yourself. Your very closest friend cannot make that choice for you. You have to choose whether you personally accept him as the Christ, the Son of God. Uh, not, not, a, not even an enemy can cause you to make that right, that choice. And it's a, uh, choices are privileges. It's a privilege that you have, uh, not to be taken for granted. Uh, look at Psalm chapter 8. First of all, we have power to make choices, and we have per the ability to make personal choices. And thirdly, we have the privilege. It's our privilege to make choices. And in Psalm, in chapter 8, you know, David said when he looked to the heavens, and I can just see David out in the fields as a shepherd boy, and, and he said, when I look into the heaven, consider the stars and the moon and all the beauty that you've made, and, and, I, and I wonder, what is man that you're even mindful of him? Considering how man is, and David knew already somewhat of what mankind was like, he said, why do you even, why do you even be mindful of, of us? And then in verse 4, he said, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For, verse 5, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all uh, sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and the and whatsoever passes through the paths of, of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Boy, I tell you what, we have a real privilege to, to know that God has given us a, the ability to be over the things that he places under our, in, in our uh, hands. As uh, the word steward is a housekeeper. There's some pretty poor housekeepers, and then there's some really immaculate housekeepers. And there's some pretty poor stewards, and there's some really good stewards. God would have us to be good stewards of whatever he puts in our possession. All the things that he gives us the ability to, to uh, have anything to do with. Uh, when I lived in Gatesville, I noticed that, uh, you know, I had a lot of sheep down that way. And I noticed as I was studying uh, Shepherd uh, in the Lord's 23rd Psalm that some of those people were not very good shepherds. Uh, they never knew to move their sheep around. Maybe they were poor people and didn't have their money to, or the land or the what. But nevertheless, those sheep suffered because they had to stay in the same pasture. They had to walk the same old path. And you can drive and see that the path may be that deep that where they'd walk, because they walked up and down the same old pathway, same thing, over and over, and they eat everything down to nothing. There's nothing to eat. And so a good shepherd moves his sheep around into green pastures and by still waters and takes care of his sheep. You and I are like those sheep. If, if we don't allow the Lord to be our shepherd and direct our path, and it's our privilege to to give, make that choice, then we're going to beat down the same old path over and over and, and, and wound up starving ourselves to death, death spiritually. Uh, but he's given us privilege to uh, have uh, dominion over the things that he's, he's made for us, and we need to really, really need the wisdom of God to, for the direction. It's a God-given privilege that we shouldn't take for granted, and it's a... Uh, all because of his graciousness, uh, because he is a gracious God to us, uh, governing your life under his direction. You have children, you direct their lives. No, they always like it, not necessarily till they get older. Raise up a child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. While he's young, he may go get rebellious 
and he may do things he shouldn't do, but if you teach him when he's old, he'll remember what he was taught. And then there's a purpose for choice, making choices. Hebrews 11, verse 25. Moses was a good, bright, brilliant person, wasn't he? He says there about Moses, it says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. In other words, he made a decision to be with Christ and not against Christ. And it's a decision you made today. It's a decision you make every moment of the day, for or against the Lord. And Moses, uh, in life, looking at his life, it's, it's your life and mine. If you choose to stay with God's people, you're going to be persecuted. They that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It's not, people's going to stab you in the back. They're going to do things. You're going to get hurt because you're a godly person. It's not, you're not going to avoid that. So you might as well say, I'm in a war zone. People are going to be shooting at me. It may be the enemy's people. It may be some of God's own people out of, out of the will of God for the moment. It doesn't make any difference. The truth is, we're with God's people. And it's a privilege to be with God's people. Uh, I always like to be with my brothers and my older sister because whatever happened, they, they took care of it. <laughs> and I never had to do much fighting until they all got grown and moved away from home. So I love being with them. They stood with me. You better not touch me. I'm telling you the truth. I don't care if you boy or girl, you better not touch Earl. The day you touch Earl, you're going to get your plow cleaned. You know what a plow is. Your tiller cleaned. Oh, I don't know what to, what to say. Your lawnmower clean. They're going to get you. I'm telling you, I, I've watched them over and over whip people because they mess with Earl. I like being with my brothers and my sisters. I didn't have to fight and I didn't have to worry about anybody hurting me either. But I, but I got, when they grew up and moved away from home, I had to learn how to fend for me. And I got a lot of whippings. And I didn't like it. I was wishing my brothers and sisters was back. Hey, listen, let's just stay with the Lord and stay with his people. And whatever happens, it's okay. We'll, we'll be able to handle it. God will give us the strength through our brothers and sisters. Do you realize that I don't know how many pairs of eyes there is out there looking up here? I can't see one thing back here behind me, but you do. And if I was something about to hurt me, you'd jump to my chair, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's the way we are. And I can look out there behind you, and you'd, you're, I, you can't see anything behind you either. See what I'm talking about? We're here for one another as Christians, and it's a real uh, privilege and a purpose that God's given a, uh, to us to make decisions to live with the Lord and to let him direct the each little step of our life. And making popular choices. Matthew 7, 13, 14. <clears throat> making a, a good choice right here. Jesus talking. He said, Enter ye not, excuse me, I'm sorry, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and Broad is the way that le uh, leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. There's a wide, big world out here, and it's a wicked world, and it's loaded with sin. And Satan is very wise to put little tidbits of things in your life to drag you little by little by little into a deeper uh, life of sin where it's hard to get out of. I've talked to a lot of people in the last three or four years, especially with Paula in the nursing home, the lives that they was led into 
through drugs and that alcohol and gradually pulled in and had a, some still not out of, a, a difficult life. Uh, practically just don't have any life at all if existing, uh, but bad choices. Broad is the way. It looks good out there, but it's not the way to go. And there's, the narrow way is so simple, and but yet narrow. Jesus said, I am the way, and that's the only way. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. That's a narrow way, isn't it? But he said there would be few, few that would find that. And that's a sad thing when they could be having a great life. Riches, people always want more and more and more. Never satisfied with what they have. Want more money. Totally enslaved by the wealth idea or having more. Uh, making the wrong uh, choices because listening to Satan who likes to give the wrong direction. I was uh, going to see Brother Ed Zellner, which is a preacher friend of mine that's retired. Hadn't seen him in several months, and I called him, turned to find out, come to find out rather, and you're going to add him to your prayer list for recovery, but he had a major surgery Tuesday, and he was in uh, HEB Hospital in uh, Bedford, and and uh, I have this uh, iPhone, and I'm just learning, hey, you can talk to that thing, and it talks back, you know. And I said, find B H E B Hospital in Bedford. And it said something. That woman flirts with me all the time, whoever she is. <laughs> and then she put all there just exactly how to get from right here to there. It was so easy. I almost turned loose of the steering wheel and let it just go. It's amazing, isn't it? How easy to get directions? Well, Satan makes it that way too, folks. And it looks good to the wrong things and the wrong paths. Don't listen to him. And then there's a, the pleasures that we have the cho because of our choice. First Timothy, in chapter 5, verse 6. Paul was writing to Timothy, he said, But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. That is a sad world of the around us that's going on, living in pleasure and dead. Uh, and he went on in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4, it says that they're without natural affection, uh, truth breakers, false accusers, Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. This is where we're living. Not without natural affection. I, I don't really have no idea how many babies have been killed because of that. How many babies are given away because of that. Without natural affection. It's a... It's just natural for any mother to want its, her baby, even in the animal world. If you go to Colorado and you see a moose, uh, a cow, you better make sure she doesn't have a baby somewhere because I guarantee you she'll get you right like that if you happen to get too close to her baby. We're living in a world when the people that's been given the privilege of making choices, ha they're, they're without natural affection. The, they, and they tell you something, and I'm, this is amongst Christians, and uh, they're truth breakers. In other words, I will do that, or I will be there, or I will whatever. I've learned to say, well, if I see certain people that I know do it, I believe them when they do it. Not because they said it, but because they finally did do something they said. They said we're living in that time. Uh, that, that's what's going on making false accusations. You know, my mom used to tell me and us, don't judge another person until you walk in their shoes. My friend, there's more judgment going on today than you can even think of. Uh, people just live to try to gossip and 
and tell things that's not true. They don't even know anything about false accusation. Uh, despisers of those that are good. I don't like him because he's always, you ask him a question, well, the Lord said, that's it. Sin will sh shackle you to the point that you're full of hate. Now, you make the choice whether you want to stay that way. Uh, just for a, a period of time of having a sensation. Paul even mentioned this, uh, just a short period of, of fulfilling a pleasurable thing only to find yourself trapped in sin. Servants are sentenced to slavery. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. And then last, you're supposed to set up. <laughs> I'm through almost. Permanent choice. Hebrews 9.27. This is a permanent choice. You'll make it yourself. And you will make it. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Christ died on that old rugged cross for you, for me. He died in our place. When it says he died in our stead, that means exactly he died in your place. You should have died, but he died in your place. You make the choice to accept his payment for your sin. And when you have him, you will have him forever. Forever with Christ. Lay down your head on your pillow at night and go to sleep knowing whether you live or die, you're going to be with Christ. Heaven just a breath away. I, mean, I sing to Paula that we'll walk on streets of gold. And that one day I tell her, you know how I talked to her, I said, you know how we always walked across the parking lot at Walmart holding hands? I said, one day we're going to be holding hands walking on streets of gold. And the first ones we're going to look for is the Lord Jesus be able to see him, and then we're going to ask him to give us a moment to see our family and our friends for walking on streets of gold. And I tell her, it's not going to always be this way because heaven's our home. We're going to be with the Lord. Make the wrong choice, though, and it's horrible. Forever without help. And then if you die that way, forever without hope in hell. The choice is yours. And my plea is that you accept Jesus. He died for you. He loved you so much. I beg you to trust him today as we stand. Our song leader comes. Today is the acceptable day. Now is the accept acceptable time. The day of salvation. <clears throat> what page, brother? Page 250. The very first verse. As we sing the first verse, you make your choice for the Lord, okay? <clears throat> 